she knew that if her find was to be taken seriously, it would have to stand up to intense scrutiny. She sent a few bone samples to the carbon dating laboratory in Oxford. Then, she waited. Even with a generous margin for error, the results placed the syphilitic body between 1300 and 1420. Not as specific as the wood dating, but still at least 70 years before Columbus's contact with the New World. At the Hull site, Roberts had found signs of the disease in more than half of the skeletons. Hers was the earliest evidence of syphilis that has been found in the Old World. But even so, the Augustinian friary was only one isolated location within a much larger continent. While her work at Hull was a start, evidence of syphilis in the rest of medieval Europe still did not seem to be as widespread as it was in the Americas. But Roberts thinks there is a good reason for the lack of other European evidence. Syphilis does not show up on the bones until the third stage of the disease. Sometimes, many years after the initial infection. In medieval times, she believes, most people would have died of other causes before the third stage set in, leaving no signs that syphilis had been present. Only a small proportion of people with syphilis will get bone change. They may die before that develops. They may have died from something like the Black Death um, or other conditions that were prevalent at the time like cholera, like um, smallpox, etc, etc. So there was a lot going on in the medieval period that will have predisposed people to die uh, quite young. And, and in fact this person has died before the age of 40, uh, but we don't know what from. But we know that this person has syphilis. Um, so it's actually difficult to get a handle on really what the prevalence, the rate of this disease was in the later medieval period in England, because there's so many confounding factors. With medieval people dying young of other causes, Roberts is not surprised that classic signs of pre-Columbian syphilis have not been found in the general European population. This very fact makes the hull skeleton so important as an early example of syphilis in the old world. Roberts's next step is to attend an international conference in Texas to present her finds to the world's leading experts in the field. with photographs of the body, a carbon date from the bones, and her explanation for the lack of evidence elsewhere in Europe, she attends a private meeting to confront George Armelagos. Don Ortner, a curator at the Smithsonian, sits in as an independent observer. It's Bob Fry. He's, oh, he's there for quite a while. Oh, hi, hi George and Don. What do you George, have there? I have some very interesting photographs of a skeleton uh -huh. from England that I think might change your mind about the pre-Columbian origin. You think that facts are going to change my mind? I'm hoping so. <laughs> oh, okay. Do you want to have a look at these then? Yes, I see. This skeleton comes from a site in Hull. It's one of three that has changes, which we would consider classic. Classic what? Oh, I see. And I would suggest that that's Kerry Sicker. Mm -hmm. yeah. Perforation of the palate here. Mm -hmm. Destruction and formation of bone. 60% of the adults have got bone formation mm -hmm. on the lower legs. I, I say that this is obviously a clear case of a syphilis. I mean, this, and I really congratulate you because this is 
quite impressive. When you see something like this, the hull specimen, which is classic, I mean, any anatomist who had had any experience with, mm. with uh, syphilis in modern populations would recognize these lesions immediately as a case of that. So I, I, you know, I don't On the face of it, Roberts has scored a significant victory. Her diagnosis of skeleton 1216 has been accepted as a clear case of syphilis. But among the thousands of other pre-Columbian skeletons excavated in Britain, Hull is still an isolated case. Roberts thinks this is because no one has been looking for syphilis in Europe, because it wasn't supposed to be there. Armelagos is still not convinced. Well, you act there. I mean, how many skeletons have been excavated in England? Would you guess? Oh, many thousands, 50,000 right. plus, I would well, say. Well, I mean, your point is, is is that even though you've looked at 50,000 skeletons, 50,000, I'm, not, well, not, ah, you, but, no, I'm no. not saying that those 50,000 skeletons have been looked at systematically and scientifically no, I, this, with, this, by this, a person who knows what well, they're looking for. Yeah, I for. know that, but I mean, this, it would be, you know, I would be, I would probably be more accepting of this position if this wasn't an issue that has been an issue from the late 1800s. Uh, or even from the 1500s. I mean, this is such an important issue within the history of medicine, within yes. the history of disease, within the history of the world, that it seems to me that, that all of this evidence would be there by now. Armelagos believes that if syphilis really was prevalent in Europe before Columbus, there should be signs of many more cases in England and throughout the European continent. But Don Ortner does not agree. Ortner has examined the evidence in both the old world and the new, and he agrees with Charlotte that even if there had been a high incidence of pre-Columbian syphilis in Europe, it would be difficult for modern archaeologists to find evidence of it today. And Ortner also disputes most of Armelagos' new world evidence. Ortner believes that there is only one way to conclusively prove that a person had syphilis. The best evidence for uh, venereal syphilis is going to occur in children's skeletons. And a telltale sign of the disease will show up in their teeth. If a woman gets pregnant during the infectious first stages, the child's teeth will form with a distinctive groove. You can see a groove that's horizontal going across the central incisor and adjacent to that, the second incisor has actually broken off. So the enamel was clearly very defective in the formation of the tooth, and this would have been right about at the end of pregnancy or at the time of birth. If a child's grooved tooth is accepted as a standard for proving the presence of syphilis, then most of Armelagos' New World evidence must be discounted. The case for syphilis originating in the New World gets significantly weaker. Of all the pre-1492 bodies looked at from the Americas, only a handful have exhibited the telltale syphilitic groove. In effect, the entire weight of the Columbus theory now rests on four or five skeletons of children born to infected parents. The quest for additional evidence continues in the new world. Because, although the amount of conclusive proof has dwindled, what remains still points to the presence of syphilis in pre-Columbian America. But other research in the old world is also beginning to produce results. It does not take long before a syphilitic tooth groove turns up in Europe. The discovery clearly indicates the presence of syphilis in Europe, and it leaves no question about the date. It is found in an ancient Greek town called Metaponto in southern Italy. In 600 BC, 2,000 years before Columbus ever set sail, Metaponto was a bustling port with 40,000 inhabitants. Machi and Renata Hennenberg have excavated nearly 300 skeletons from the town. They began to see evidence of syphilis while working their way through the bones looking for signs of other diseases. 
what I could see on the bones in terms of physical signs of disease was not making much sense in terms of patterns we normally expect in some ancient populations and it took me two weeks to come to grips with the idea that the signs fit only one disease and this disease was syphilis. Machi found many bones with the classic syphilitic lesions and formations. But it was his wife, Renata, a dental expert, who discovered the clinching proof. A child skeleton with the distinctive grooved teeth. When I told him that I have two examples of the teeth changed as it is, um, found in congenital syphilis, Machi was very happy because finally we um, had the picture of syphilis coming together. The Hennebergs knew that if their diagnosis was right, syphilis must have been present in Europe long before Columbus was even born. But if syphilis had been present in Europe since classical times, could they expect to find more evidence at other locations? They focused their efforts on another site they were excavating, the ancient Roman port city of Pompeii.